All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're ready because it is Wednesday and you know what that means. Time to discover some wisdom, Wednesday wisdom, ladies and gentlemen. And today we're going to be talking about an incredible subject, one that is on the top of the list for fascinating with me, the Hermetica, ladies and gentlemen. Have you ever heard of it? Because what we're talking about is the lost, occult, esoteric, mystical, whatever you may call it, but the lost wisdom of the pharaohs, or even Atlantis, ladies and gentlemen, and times before the history that we have today. But you might be asking yourself already, if you've never heard of the Hermetica, what is the Hermetica? And, you know, what is this? What are you talking about here? And so let me give you a little summary here of what it says on the back of this book here. Discover the secret teachings at the heart of Western thought. The figure of Hermes. Have you ever heard of Hermes, ladies and gentlemen? The Greek figure. But let us continue. The figure of Hermes was venerated as a great and mythical teacher in the ancient world and was rediscovered by some of the finest minds of the Renaissance. So we're talking, ladies and gentlemen, about a knowledge here, almost a secret knowledge or a, you know, a not so popular not so talked about kind of knowledge. And it makes you wonder if the further you go back, like before Egypt and, you know, into closer to the golden age, if you've seen the Yuga cycles calendar that shows the golden age and the, I believe it's the silver and the bronze age and the dark age at the bottom. And then it goes back up around in this 24,000 year cycle. By the way, I hope you got yourself some tea, ladies and gentlemen. What it says today here is personal growth lies within the unknown. Courage permits you to explore this space. I find that fitting for the type of subject we find ourselves entering into today. And this will just be a beginning because there is too much on this subject. You could do a lifetime of study and not truly understand the great knowledge and mystical wisdom that there is in hermetics and in the hermetic philosophy and teachings and practices and sciences. Some even refer to it, ladies and gentlemen, as magic. But we'll get to that later. Right now, we're just talking about what is hermetics and where does this come from and why is it important? But so the figure of Hermes, once again, like we said, was venerated as the great, I'd say, greatest mythical teacher in the ancient world. The writings attributed to his hand, this Hermes, or Thoth in Egypt, is, and I've heard it, it can also be pronounced Tahat, T-H-O-T-H, -T -H, Thoth, but which was also an Egyptian god. So Hermes was a Greek god, Thoth being an Egyptian god. But uh, I continue saying here, I'm just looking at the little bit on the back here, to give us an overview of Hermetics and maybe get somebody interested to look into this, what is categorized as mysticism and philosophy. As we know from our Wednesday Wisdom series, ladies and gentlemen, that I'm all into the mystics and the philosophers and the poets and, you know, those people that seek to discover the wisdom. And that's why we're here. Wednesday wisdom, ladies and gentlemen. But so the writings attributed to Hermes' hand are a time capsule of Egyptian and Greek and maybe even Atlantean esoteric philosophy. And this time capsule, these writings that are attributed to Hermes or Thoth have influenced figures, including even Blake, who we read in our Wisdom of the Ages series, Newton, Milton, 
Shelley, who we also had in there. Shakespeare, who was also in there. Botticelli, Leonardo da Vinci, and even Carl Jung. Here is the first truly accessible compendium of the mystical philosophy attributed to the legendary sage god, Hermes Trismegistus. And Hermes Trismegistus is Greek for thrice greatest Hermes. So that's how much this character, whether it's just an archetypal character or a physical being or, you know, um, because sometimes when there are great teachings, you use an archetypal character rather than an actual person. I mean, they're talking about a god here, but whether Hermes or Thoth or Thoth or, you know, the Egyptian version of Hermes, whether he or it actually existed physically, I think is irrelevant to the wisdom that comes to us from this legendary sage god, Hermes Trismegistus, which once again is for Greek, for the thrice greatest, three times the greatest, ladies and gentlemen. So they took his knowledge and his wisdom very seriously. Um, a combination of the Egyptian Thoth and the Greek Hermes was this uh, thrice greatest, Hermes Trismegistus. The Hermetica itself, which is what we're holding in our hands here, is a fascinating introduction to the intersection of the Egyptian and the Hellenic cultures. And the magico-religious ideas of the antique world the old world, ladies and gentlemen. It is an essential and illuminating volume for anyone interested in understanding the West's roots in Egyptian and esoteric thought. And it ends there. It says, uh, this book is by Timothy Freak and Peter Gandy. They are the authors of widely popular books, The Jesus Mysteries, Jesus and the Lost Goddess, uh, many more. They live in England, it says. So thank you to Timothy and Peter for giving us this, this collection here that's kind of an overview of the Hermetica and Hermetics and where it comes from. But ladies and gentlemen, you can always you can already see from what is simply put there in a short summary about how important this wisdom tradition, this mystery school as you may call it, was in the ancient world. But you can also see how, um, since, you know, unless you have heard of this already, but if you have heard, then you still probably have the feeling about how um, secret or not talked about or played off as unimportant this knowledge is. Even up to today, ladies and gentlemen, I think the reason for that is it's not for everybody. So disclaimer, this wisdom is not for everybody. If you do not feel called to discover the secret teachings of the ancients in the mystery schools, then do not look into it because you're not ready. That's kind of held me back from even sharing about this subject. Um, and all the time that I've done this channel, because I wanted to start talking about it a year or two ago when I discovered it. And it meant so much to me. I was like, holy cow, you know, um, there's just implications that relate to, you know, the, the universe, the force, this ability to manifest and create with, you know, or through thought in our connection to God or the force or the Tao. And it's interesting that thought and thoth are uh, very similar words. And so it is just fascinating. And the connection also, because 
one of the areas that got me into all of this, uh, you know, researching down philosophy and things is um, I was raised Christian. And, you know, so I had a base foundation that was laid down for me for I concepts and ideas about spiritual teachings and spiritual masters and, you know, certain kinds of abilities, like the magic you know, the miracles that Jesus performs and those things. But then, you know, um, I went through a, um, what Jeff would call an unindoctrination, but, you know, I discovered a new perspective. And when you watch shows, you know, 10, 12 years ago or whatever, like Ancient Aliens, you start to discover that that also lays a basic foundation. That is not the answers. That's like beginner level one stuff. So if you think ancient aliens has all the answers, <laughs> think again, ladies and gentlemen, because that's just the beginner introductory kind of thinking that it takes to get you to expand and open your mind to new possibilities that are uh, maybe counter to what you think. So where I'm going with this ramble here is the connection that you find once you open your mind between all religions and spiritual traditions and how there is some kind of underlying mystical teaching or an ability that can be gained through effort or something the way that it really clicked for me because of you know um, the time that I grew up and what what's been popular in the world for us is the idea of Star Wars and how there is this force but in order for the Jedis to use the force they have to go to temple you know like think of monks like you don't just learn how to connect with God and use what most people would call miracles or magic by living common daily life in society in any time period, whether it be a thousand years ago or today. You almost have to go away and devote yourself to the study of this ability or this connection to this force or God what some would call magic and miracles. But as you know, ladies and gentlemen, I am so fascinated with the science of what we seem to call lucky people. Those that seem to be in the right place at the right time and, you know, things just work out for them. They're, they're lucky, or as it seems. But I think there is a science to what we've described before as manifesting or the ability to create through thought, the ability to affect the physical world through your thoughts. And so with all of that said, this wisdom was the key unlock for me to know that there is a reality to the idea of this ability that can be easily summed up by Jedis using the force or, you know, magicians using some kind of interesting magic that takes a long time to learn and it, not everybody can access it because of the type of practice and dedication and you know self work that it takes see that's why i think it's um coincidental but important that we've gone through wisdom of the ages with dr wayne dyer that taught us about um, leveling up our self, so to speak, our psychology and our, you know, what it is, the way we think about the world. And, you know, there's all these different aspects of leveling up, so to speak. I don't really like to put it that way because that's kind of um, a very egotistical or physical, you know, concrete way to put it, not the correct description, but increasing our own personal Mm, quality of mind and of being and of self i don't know i'm going further ladies and gentlemen but a connection the key unlock was seeing that all of these ancient cultures whether it be the greek the egyptian and others as we'll find as we continue to read forward here that there, there is a wisdom tradition underlying all of it. All right. So we're talking about a forgotten 
spiritual classic, ladies and gentlemen. And so if you're here, I know that you are interested in spirituality and higher consciousness and thinking in ways that most people wouldn't dare to go. And so I salute you being here, seeking after wisdom on Wednesday wisdom, ladies and gentlemen. And if you're getting value so far, then consider subscribing. And if you're already subscribed, then leave me a comment. Let me know if you've ever heard of this subject. And if you haven't, then put no. If you have, put yes. Um, it's interesting to note that because yesterday we're reading from uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer's Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life, Living the Wisdom of the Tao, which is all the verses of the Tao Te Ching, right here inside the very first page of this book, the top other book that's referenced is the Tao Te Ching. And it's uh, these these books are the harsher cornerstone editions. And so they're like, there's a bunch of these that are different uh, books like the Tao, the essential Marcus Aurelius, which would probably be a great one to get, ladies and gentlemen. Um, selections from A Course in Miracles, which Wayne references often in his lectures. The Kabbalion, which I also have back over there on my other show. The Spiritual Emerson. Oh, Essential Works by Ralph Waldo Emerson, ladies and gentlemen. I want to get, see, you need to have all of these. <laughs> the Four Gospels, The Lost Wisdom of the Pharaohs, which is what we're holding in our hands. And remember our favorite Sufi poet, Rumi, and the Arms of the Beloved. So incredible books from these uh, Tarsha Cornerstone editions. I'm wondering if there's somebody out there that's, you know, like, oh, those are all, uh, you don't want to trust those editions because that's the system that wants you to know that. You have to get other versions and I'd accept that because, you know, everybody has their own opinions. But ladies and gentlemen, we're just here to get an overall understanding of something that you may have never even heard of before, which is the Hermetica and Hermetics and the teachings of Hermes and Thoth and the lost wisdom of the pharaohs in Atlantis. And so... We'll begin with what is titled The Last Words of Thrice Great Hermes, Trismegistus. And it says here, quote, Wise words, although written by my decaying hand, remain imperishable through time. Imbued with the medicine of immortality by the all-master, be unseen and undiscovered by all those who will come and go, wandering the wastelands of life. Be hidden until an older heaven births human beings who are worthy of your wisdom. Having sounded this prayer over the works of his hands, Hermes was received in the sanctuary of eternity. Mm. Is that not just powerful, ladies and gentlemen? Is that not just powerful? And so this to me speaks of what I was saying just shortly ago about how this knowledge isn't for everyone. And actually, hopefully it remains hidden from those who are not ready for it and may misuse it. See, which also makes me think of Star Wars, how the, there was the dark side guys and the Jedis, and the dark side guys had the knowledge of the magic and they were misusing it. You know, they didn't take the long time, their whole life, training the hard way at Temple or whatever it be to access it through a positive nature rather than emotions like anger, frustration, and hatred and you know seeking to dominate and control others which would be as we all know ladies and gentlemen and if you don't know dark magic there is a light magic and a dark magic and i think that's also explained in the dark side and the jedi because the force is just a force it's like a neutral thing and it can be used like a tool but ladies and gentlemen the way that Hermes puts it here. He goes, 
remain imperishable, talking about this great wisdom that he has imparted. Through time, imbued with the medicine of immortality. But, he says, be unseen and undiscovered by all those idiots, I'll add, <laughs> by all those people who will come and go wandering the wastelands of life. Not really interested in leveling up their, you know, their spirit to a higher level. And he says, be hidden until an older heaven which I think is the golden age a long time ago. You know, the time, the previous time where this knowledge came from or where this knowledge exists, maybe, always. And connects it to the here and now. But by all those, uh, until an older heaven births human beings. So until we come into the world, that are of a kind of consciousness and a kind of mind. And, you know, even that is a deep sentiment, but you can look at different times in history and it's easy to see, man, we just thought differently back then. You know, the kinds of things that we were willing to allow and go along with or just thought was fine and normal adjust over time. And I think we're at a higher level of consciousness than we've been at times in the past. And I do believe there's a confusion about um, Anatoly Fomenko, I think, and the thousand missing years and a lot of other subjects, but that's a different topic, ladies and gentlemen, which could all be connected. And so it's important to remember that everything is connected. But this idea that this knowledge, after being hidden and being undiscovered and unseen by all the silly low consciousness individuals which we could very well be so hopefully we're not i would think we're not since we're talking about and trying to discover this wisdom but maybe we're half and half <laughs> but they will come and go and they will stay hidden until an older heaven brings in human beings into existence who are worthy of your wisdom it says so hermes is not speaking about his wisdom. He's speaking about a wisdom that he has imparted. Although, he says, wise words, although written by my decaying hand, are the medicine of immortality by the all-master. So, you know, it's just simply God. But there might be more to why he describes God as the all-master rather than the Tao or the force. And so there will be there will come a time where there are people who are worthy of this great wisdom. And so, like I said, hopefully we are ready, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready? I'm excited. And then he finishes, having sounded this prayer over the works of his hands, Hermes was received into the sanctuary of eternity. Is that that immortality that he was talking about? that we so often confuse with never-ending physical existence, which may be a trap. It's interesting to think, ladies and gentlemen, the chapters are the prophecies of Hermes and the initiation of Hermes and the being of Atum. Contemplating creation, the circle of time, the gods, the hierarchy of creation, the creation of humankind the birth of human culture and how man is a marvel, the zodiac and destiny. Oh, these are great subjects, ladies and gentlemen. These are all like the ultimate questions. So if you're looking to know the answers to the meaning of life and like what is the purpose of the universe, like every one of the biggest questions you could ever ask, where did we come from? What is the soul? Uh, who is God? You know, um, what is destiny? Ah, and just in general, secret teachings. You come to the right place, ladies and gentlemen. And so the introduction here begins, and we'll we'll end this up here soon and leave leave this off till next episode of this series, because this is gonna be a good one, ladies and gentlemen. I mean. The, the Hermetica is a cornerstone of Western culture. It's substance and importance. It is equal 
to well-known Eastern scriptures like the Upanishads and the Tao Te Ching, which we've looked into a lot, ladies and gentlemen. So the introduction to this book begins by saying a forgotten spiritual classic. The Hermetica is a collection. Now this is coming from the book here. This is coming to us from Tim and Pete, or Timothy Freak and Peter Gandhi. Much uh, thank you to the authors and the publishers. And I'm reading this for purposes of teaching and commentary, and so that we can expand and try to have you know a discussion or a new understanding about things that we may, may have not discovered before that could help us create a higher quality of life. And so back to what it begins with here. The Hermetica is a collection of writings attributed to Thoth. I'll add, maybe even before him, a mythical ancient Egyptian sage whose wisdom is said to have transformed him into a god. So Thoth, if you didn't get that, ladies and gentlemen, was a mythical ancient Egyptian sage whose wisdom is said to have transformed him into a god. Thoth, or Tehopt, or Thoth, as some people say it, the Ibis god, who was venerated in Egypt from at least 3000 BCE, is credited with the invention of sacred hieroglyphic writing. So, like, that's just a mind blower there. Like, wait a minute. This Thoth guy is credited with the invention of hieroglyphic writing? Wow. It continues. And his figure, portrayed as a scribe, you always see the Ibis god with the, like, the pencil, and he's got some kind of, you could call it a, a pad, but I don't know, if you look more at a lot of the hieroglyphs, it looks like he's got some kind of ancient technology. That's a different discussion, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about the Hermetica and where Hermetics come from. And as you can already tell, it comes from the ultimate source of both Greek and Egyptian, um, you know, gods, spiritual leaders, teachers, mythical figures. And so uh, his figure portrayed as a scribe with the head of Anubis can be seen in many temples and tombs. He is the dispatcher of divine messages and recorder of all human deeds. See, even that's a lot to think of there. So he is responsible. He's the dispatcher. So to me, that thinks he sends uh, according to plan. You know, like, okay, this goes there, that goes there. This is going to go there. The dispatcher, it says, of divine messages. So have you ever received a divine message, ladies and gentlemen? Or are you just now thinking, maybe I have, and I never really seen it that way, never really gave it that much credit? I think we all get divine messages all the times, all the time, and sometimes we just think it's so simple that it was like, turn left here instead of going straight, and little do we know, we listened to the advice and there was a you know we avoided a car accident or some kind of miraculous thing that you never really know about because you avoided it remember no news is good news ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but so he's the dispatcher of these kinds of divine messages of all kinds and the recorder of all human deeds that's a big one we're talking about the akashic record here and if you've never heard of the akashic record it's kind of like this idea of like a record of all things of all events of all human deeds and thoughts and emotions and feelings and the effect and you know just an ultimate record of everything that takes place within the universe and so they're giving this kind of credit to this guy that leaves us this wisdom known as Hermetics or the Hermetic. And it's like, if you think this is silly, then you, you're probably uh, not ready. 
because there couldn't be any more importance as far as I'm concerned with knowledge like this. But somebody who is the dispatcher of divine messages, the recorder of all human deeds, the book continues here, in the great hall of judgment, the afterlife court of the god Osiris, Thoth would establish whether the deceased had acquired spiritual knowledge and purity. And so if you take the judgment out of that, like the term sin is an archery term for missing the mark. And so if you take the judgment out of, oh, you messed up, you missed the target on your archery shot, you would think, okay, you got to take some more shots, practice more, get better. And so if you take the uh, like one time, one attempt out of that idea, you're establishing whether people, the deceased had acquired spiritual knowledge and pur purity and so deserved a place in the heavens. And it's like, we, we've been so indoctrinated with the Christian uh, system of the afterlife and the concepts that come with that, that it makes us often think of things like this as you get one try. And then when God judges you, you either go to heaven or hell. And if you sucked, then you go to hell. And if you were decent enough to make it, then you'll go to heaven. And that's it. One life. What? One life? But so as we know, as we've opened our minds and discovered new things and looked at mo multiple spiritual teachings, and we now know that God, or whatever this is that we are a part of, is not separate from us. And so this whole judgment process is not the way that we thought it was. There isn't one try. Remember the missing the mark. You have to shoot again to get better. And you also have to miss to know that you need to aim better, right? So when those are judged in the great hall of judgment, now this is relating to Egyptian teaching, the afterlife court of the god Osiris, Thoth would weigh and measure. They had like these scales. It's fascinating. And I think it was like to weigh to see if your soul was, it was like compared to a feather. Maybe I'm just thinking about different hieroglyphs there, but I feel like I've heard that talked about, which is even fascinating in its own concept, but that's a different subject. Back to back to this here. Thoth, Hermes, Trice, you know, Thrice Greatest, Trismegistus, would establish whether or not people in this lifetime had acquired the spiritual knowledge and purity to advance to you know what is described as deserve a place in the heavens thoth was said to have revealed to the egyptians all knowledge on astronomy architecture geometry medicine and religion and was believed by the ancient greeks to be the architect of the pyramids, ladies and gentlemen, believed by the ancient Greeks to be the architect of the pyramids. So we're talking about quite a guy here. Whether or not, because it does say he was a mythical figure, but we're talking about quite a figure here. The Greeks, who were in awe of the knowledge and spirituality of the Egyptians, which all of us should be, I think, they got it from Atlantis, and the Greeks got it from them. But that's more history to learn, which is fun. I love learning history, ladies and gentlemen, because it unlocks this kind of wisdom. So they were in awe of the knowledge and spirituality of the Egyptians. They identified Thoth with their own god, Hermes, the messenger of the gods, and a guider of souls in the realm of the dead. So very similar to Thoth. To distinguish the Egyptian Hermes from their own, they gave him the title Trismegistus, meaning thrice great, to honor his sublime wisdom. The books attributed to him became collectively known as the Hermetica. Boom, ladies and gentlemen, a boom to wisdom. A boom to knowledge and see that's just a introduction there to the hermetica 
What is the Hermetica and where does it come from? And why is it important? Don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, if you found this fascinating, there's a lot of pages left to discover great wisdom from Thoth, Hermes, Trismegistus. And um, the next little section here talks about, so where it comes from, the Renaissance, uh, giving birth to our modern age, going through time, great, uh, great teachers, the connection to the court of Queen Elizabeth I of Hermetics, the Protestant Reformation, uh, frontiers of Europe, Islamic mystics, philosophers. Um, it's just incredible. And then it, we begin. Then we begin to go into the history of the Hermetica, ladies and gentlemen, which is an incredible story. And then the Hermetica related to Islam and the you know traditions that we always uh, or that some of us. I don't know, it's just there's so many things to be connected here that you never thought were totally connected. And it is, ladies and gentlemen, everything is connected. Remember that. And then Hermes and the reawakening of Europe. So more talk about the Renaissance and the Dark Ages. And wow, just so much to get into here. And then the unifying religion. And then finally, the demise of the thrice greatest. And the wisdom of the pharaohs, the Hermetica and early Christianity, and the mind of God. Many stuff. And then after we get through all that history and knowledge and understanding of where this great wisdom has gone, where it came from, and what it's been doing, and the influences it's had on all of history, then we begin, ladies and gentlemen, to go into the prophecies of Hermes, which there are quite a few. There are quite a few. And so I really hope you're interested in this, ladies and gentlemen, because mm, it's one of those subjects I find most fascinating. Like I've said before, I'm always fascinated with the mystics and the sages. And so I hope you got value, ladies and gentlemen. If you did, consider subscribing. And if you are subscribed, smash that like button. It helps the algorithm push these videos to more people. So we can hopefully help more people along their journey of spirituality and self-actualization, self-realization. Um, you know, wisdom, the journey of wisdom, ladies and gentlemen, because it has been a Wednesday wisdom. And remember to seek to achieve and maintain happiness through enlightenment. Seek to discover the hidden wisdom of the ages. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, to make happiness the way. There is no way to happiness. It is the way. So we have to begin to practice bringing it in to life in each of our moments. And so that is, I don't say that lightly. I know that's a challenge and it takes a lot of practice. But practice bringing happiness in to life rather than seeking to acquire it. And then... Once we can do that, rather than telling ourselves, oh, I'll be happy when I get there, we'll be there. And then the entire journey will be wonderful. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I love and appreciate everybody, especially those of you who spend time here with me and usually Dr. Wayne Dyer and Lao Tzu. But today, Timothy Freak and Peter Gandhi and Thoth, Hermes, Trismegistus, and discovering the wisdom, the lost wisdom, of the pharaohs it's so fascinating ladies and gentlemen please do leave me a comment let me know if you're interested in diving deeper into this subject and this lost wisdom that there is all right i'll be back next week with some more tuesday dow and hopefully we'll make some short videos in between now and then thank you ladies and gentlemen na -na 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 -na.